Hey guys, I have here the Jacoper 100 amp hour lithium iron phosphate server rack battery. If you've seen my previous videos, you know I've been working on trying to get this working with the MPP Solar LV6548 inverter. In particular, trying to get communication set up between the two. The good news is I was finally able to figure out what the problem was and I have it working. Uh, it's been quite the journey, but it finally works. So the core of the issue is while this Jacoper battery does support the Pylon Tech protocol, it was pre-configured to use the Pylon Tech protocol over the CAN pins of this uh, BMS interface. And that's why the RS-485 port was appearing as dead. Now the MPP Solar LV6540 inverter does support CAN, however it's expecting the Pylon Tech protocol on the RS-485 pins. Uh, so even though I had made a CAN bus cable and tried the CAN port, it still didn't work because the inverter was not configured to use the Pylon Tech protocol on the CAN bus port. Uh, so today I'll be showing you how to get this set up and the settings you need to change. Uh, you will need an RS-232 cable. You can purchase that cable from Jacoper or you can make your own. Uh, I'll show you how to make your own. Unfortunately, you cannot change the uh, protocol settings in this BMS without having that cable and a computer to run their software on. All right, so step one is you'll need an RS-232 cable to connect to the RS-232 port on this battery. So I just have a USB RS-232 adapter that goes to a serial port, and then I've got a DB9 connector I've salvaged from an old project. Obviously this is a rather poorly done cable, uh, but it gets the job done for my use case. Uh, so here's the pinout for this cable if you would like to build your own. I will link to the RS-232 USB adapter in the video description that I used. I do recommend purchasing one with the FTDI chipset. Alternatively, if you don't want to build your own cable, you can purchase one from Jacoper directly. Uh, for the RS-232 port, this is an RJ11 or a telephone style connector. Uh, you need one with at least four pins. On a standard four pin telephone cable, you'll have pins two through four connected. So we'll go ahead and plug that in here. Alright, so next you'll need to download version 2.5 of the Jacoper software from the Jacoper website. Again, I will link in the video description to exactly where you can obtain that software. You need to make sure you have this version 2.5 software. This was just published recently. Uh, if you have the older 2.04 version or anything before 2.5, it does not have the configuration option to change this uh, protocol information. So version 2.5 of the software, it says PBMS tools. Just go ahead and run that. Uh, so once the program opens, you can see it is in Chinese. So down here in the bottom right, you can click this icon, change it to English, click OK. So if it does not connect automatically, you can select your COM port up here. I only have one port, and the baud rate should be 9600, pack one. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and click open, and you can see down here it is downloading information. We can see all the cell voltage information here on the left. The important part we need to look at is the top right where it says inverter protocol. So you want to take this drop down menu, and when I found this battery yesterday, it was set to uh, pylon can, and that is for the DEYE inverter, which I believe is also the setting you'll need for the uh, Solar converter. However, we had to change this to pylon 485. So all you have to do is click that, and you see it said operation successful, and it closed. And we can see inverter protocol now says pylon 485. Now this is what caught me up, because the original software version 2.0 does not have this feature here. So somewhere along the lines between when I started this originally and uh, yesterday, they published this new version of the 2.5 version software. So that's all we need to do in here. Simply click close. On the front of the Jacoper battery, we'll want to make sure the address switches have number one in the on or up position, and then numbers two, three, and four should be in the down or off position. Once you make that change, uh, we'll go ahead and restart the BMS. You shouldn't actually need to do this step, but we're going to uh, do it just to make sure we have those settings saved. So on the inverter here, we need to push and hold the bottom right button to get into the settings menu. We need to go down to setting number five. Okay, and you can see there are various options here. We need to make sure that is set to PYL or Pylon Tech. Press return to save that setting. And then top left, uh, the back button to return to the home screen. And then we're just going to shut that inverter off. All right, next you need to make your RJ45 cable for the RS-485 communications. Now I used three pins in this cable. I used RS-45, A, B, and the ground. It still seems debatable whether or not that ground reference pin is required. 
MPP Solar says just to use A and B. Many wiring diagrams around the internet say you need to use the ground, many say you do not. So I did put a question mark on the ground pin. It's up to you whether or not you want to connect it. I'm not going to advise one way or the other. I'm simply pointing out that I used the ground pin in my cable. So you want to make sure you do not mix up the ends. You need to have the jack per end in the jack per battery, obviously. This has to go in the port marked RS485A. You cannot use ports B or C. These ports are running on a different protocol and a different baud rate. So jack per end goes in RS485A. And the MPP solar end goes in the BMS port on the MPP solar inverter. It does not go in the uh, PC communications port. It must be the BMS port. All right, so now we have our battery turned on. We've double checked all the settings and double checked the cabling. You can go ahead and turn on the uh, inverter. Now it can take up to a minute for this inverter to begin communications, but we should see it fairly quickly here. All right, so taking a look at the inverter here, we can see it has completed starting up and we see the battery light is flashing. That means it has established communications with the battery. They are communicating back and forth normally. Additionally, this has been running for several minutes now and we see it has not shut down with fault codes like it has before. All right, so there we go. Successful communication between the jack per battery and the MPP Solar LV6548 at last. This was way, way, way more difficult than it should have been. There is no excuse for Jack per not testing this ahead of time and not publishing the information necessary to set up this communication when they advertise it being capable of communicating with that inverter. That being said, I do still think this is a fantastic battery and we have this video now if anybody has any questions. However, hopefully Jack per does work towards improving their support and their documentation. Any questions or comments, feel free to leave them. Hit that like button before you go, and thanks for watching.